Hey folks, this is Brian from Super Easy Toots, and in this tutorial we're going to cover character functions. Basically there's a large set of standard C++ functions that deal exclusively with characters. Um, they're located in a ctype.h file or library, which is included in most integrated development environments, IDEs for short, such as Quincy. And IDE is basically the software program that we've been using um, to uh, run and compile and write our programs on. Um, if your compiler does not recognize any of these functions that we're going to go over, then all you want to do is do a pound include with this ctype.h, just like what we've been doing with the pound include IO stream to get access to our C out statements. And it's just like this, just a pound include ctype.h inside the brackets. Um, I've commented this one out because if you're using Quincy, you shouldn't have to, uh, you shouldn't have to uh, pound include this because you should already have access to these to these different functions. So now what some of these functions allow you to do is pass in a char variable that you created and check whether it's a certain character type. And here are some examples. Uh, we have is digit and that's the name of the function. And basically that tests if the passed in char is a digit. It returns true if it's a digit and false if it's not a digit. And if you remember the Boolean, uh, Boolean data types, true is going to return a numeric uh, number of, of 1 and false is going to return a number of 0. Uh, another uh, function is is upper. And it tests if the passed in char is an uppercase character. And again, it returns either true or false. Uh, now, you to use these functions, you do not need to write a function prototype or definition. Um, you just need to use the function call in your program. So, for example, if we created a char um, a variable and named it yy and set it equal to the character small a, all we would do is just call this function this way, is upper, and then pass in our char name of yy. And that would return, again, either true or false, either 0 for false or 1 for true. Now, if you want to see more examples of these, I've just given you two here with the is upper and is digit. Just do a Google search and you'll be able to find all of the standard, uh, all the standard char functions. Now, there are two other functions that are used quite often that I want to go over. And they basically are two upper and two lower. And what these functions do is they take a char variable that's passed as an argument and convert it to an uppercase character or a lowercase character depending on the function that, you, that you're using. If uh, two upper is called and the pass char is already an uppercase character, it's just going to return that, uh, that char unchanged. Uh, again, you do not need to write a function prototype or definition to use these functions. Just use a, a straight function call in your program. Um, and here's an example. Again, we've created a char and named it yy set it equal to the small uh, character a and then the way we use the two upper function is again two upper and then we pass in our, our char variable name yy and it's going to return a capital A but there's a little asterisk by that and I'm going to show you why in just a second um, so let's go over here to Quincy and basically we'll go to the is upper function again I've created a char named it yy set it equal to small uh, character A, created another char variable and named it ZZ and set it equal to a capital A. Um, now when I do this function call, we're not going to see any output on the screen here, so I did a C out statement, an output statement, to, um, uh, to show you that it's actually uh, returning a value here. So now is upper ZZ, which is an uppercase uh, uh, character, so it's going to return a true value here of 1. So when we run this, we're going to see that we have the number 1 there because this is a true statement. Is upper ZZ? Yes, it is. So we get the 1, the true statement returned. Now I'm going to uncomment these, and we'll go through these one by one. So I, I told you there's a little asterisk to this to upper. What we're doing here is an output statement. We're using the function call to upper of yy. Now this is a small case A, 
So to upper is going to change that into a, it's going to return a uh, capital A. It's not doing anything to this variable. This, is, this variable is not changing anything. If you remember, functions basically return something unless there's a void in front of it. They're going to return a data type. And in this case, it's going to return a char, and it's going to be a capital A. But I'm going to show you what I mean by the asterisk now as I run this. and it returns the number 65. Uh, if you remember from the last tutorial, the ASCII values, 65 is capital A. So what we need to do to get that A, uh, to get that A return, is we need to do the typecast that we, that we learned earlier, and we're just in parentheses gonna put the word char, so we get a char return. So it's gonna take this value, that 65 that we just saw output it on the screen and make it into a char. So when we run this, now we're going to get our capital A. And there you have it. So that's one of the big reasons to understand the ASCII value is to use functions like this. And uh, again here I've done in this next uh, in this next output statement, I've done uh, to lower, I've called the function to lower and ZZ, now ZZ is obviously capital A, so it's going to convert that capital A into a small a. That's what it's going to return. Um, it's not, again, it's not going to change the ZZ here. It's just the return value is going to be the uh, smaller case version of this. So now I'm going to run this, and again, we're going to see we get a numeric value return, we get the number 97, which if you remember, ASCII value-wise is a small a, so what we need to do again is do our typecast here, and do the word char, and I'll run it again, and we'll see that we do indeed get that small a returned now. And then last but not least, I want to show you that if you do um, pass a um, capital uh, a capital character such as ZZ which is already uh, an uppercase character into this function it's just going to return the same thing so we'll run this and we have 65 which if you remember is the A I'll just prove it to you here by doing a typecast of char here and we'll run this again and we have the capital A there for the two upper even though um, it was a function call it didn't uh, it didn't change the the uh, return um, the return value kept it as this so that's pretty much it as far as um, the uh, character functions again if you want to see a listing of them best thing to do is to go uh, do a google search you'll be able to find it that way